welcome to First Assembly of God Online. I'm Pastor Candice, and I am so excited you chose to join with us today. Philippians 4.4, one of our M&M challenge verses says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. So with that in mind, let's come together and rejoice as we worship our Lord. Good morning, everybody. We're here to bless the name of the Lord once again. We should never stop blessing and praising his name and always have a testimony. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. Oh, oh. Resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Oh, my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from dead to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified, oh, this is my testimony, this is my testimony, oh, God, I have something good that the Lord has done, and all he knows how to do is great things, come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water, the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father, our God, will finish what He started. For oh, our God will finish what He started. Oh, this is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. God's been so good to me. Yeah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. If I'm not dead, you're not done. No, no. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. Sing that. If I'm not dead.
on the Lord with him at my right hand I will not be shaken and church family I want to remind us today of who our God is that he turns graves into gardens he takes us to cross over from death to life and no matter how many obstacles and struggles there are going on around the world or even in your personal life 
we can stand secure in the promises of God. We will not be shaken. And so as we have been in this time of 40 days of fasting and prayer, would you stand with me? Would you join with me? Even right there, wherever you're watching, raise your voice and let's pray together. God, we thank you that knowing who you are and knowing what you've done, we can stand confident in your promises. And today, Lord, as we recognize that throughout our world, there are so many struggles. And even in our own personal lives, Lord, we know that in you, we have all that we need. We know that you are our healer. For those even watching right now that have sent their requests for healing, for Lord, a move of God in their family, for restoration in their marriage, for Lord, health in their mind, in their heart. God, would you do that in our families? For all the kids that have been starting school, we pray in the name of Jesus that your blessing would be over every household, over every parent. For those, Lord, who have been struggling and finding their uh, work or employment, would you provide financially, Lord, for those who have been struggling with emotional battles, that, Lord, you would bring comfort and divine, a divine peace that only comes from you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And we know that in you, God, we have the victory. And as we continue to fast and pray, we pray that revival would come to our land, that you would bring healing to our land, not only here in the high desert, but throughout our nation and around the world. God, you are in control and we are secure in you. We trust in you. And so, Lord, even for those who are watching that have been anxious, that have been burdened, that have been going through struggles in their lives, would you bring divine peace, divine joy, and divine provision? You are good, and we rejoice in you, God, because we have the victory in you, Jesus. We ask this all and we proclaim and declare the goodness of God over our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, church family. Let's continue to worship because we have the victory. It may be formed, but it will prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Will you declare that where you are? Say, my God will never fail. I'm gonna sing a victory. I'm gonna sing a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna sing a victory. I'm gonna sing a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, the battle. Yours, my God, victory in Jesus, my Savior. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. No, no, I know how this story. Declare that once again. Come on. I know how this story goes. I'm gonna sing a victory. I'm gonna sing a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna sing a victory. I'm gonna sing a victory. For the battle. The battle is yours. 
Savior forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Turn it for good. That's what he does, y'all. Sing. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Turn it for good. Take it all, my God, yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Take it all, my God. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Turn it, Lord, turn it right now. You turn it for good. Take it all, my God, yeah. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, sing that again one more time. Take it all, my God. You, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Yeah. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see, cause I'm gonna see a victory. One voice. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. One voice. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Yeah. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs. sound of worship. Let him take it all and turn it. He will take it and turn it for good. Take it, turn it all, yeah. Oh, we praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. How many of us know, church, that God is our victory this morning? Amen. We're so glad that you're watching with us on this first Sunday of September. And as we culminate our M&M challenge, I think about what the Bible says in Psalms 46.1, that God is our strength and our refuge and ever-present help in times of trouble. And so as we give church this morning, we give with a conviction that we know that God promised to be our strength and our refuge and ever present help in times of trouble. Amen, church. I want to remind you that we have three ways to give. You can use push pay by texting VF Assembly to the number 77977. You can give online. Find our Give tab on the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Input your information accordingly as you give online. Finally, you can mail in your check to our church offices at 15260 Nisqually Road. All the information is there on your screen. Church, we want to thank you for being faithful and obedient as you give to the Lord this morning. Would you join me in a word of prayer? God, we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness, God, that you promised to help your people, God, that you promised to be our strength and our refuge and our provider, God, that we could rest in your promises, that you will supply the needs of our church families, God, the needs of your people. And God, I pray that as we give, that we would give knowing, God, that there are souls still here in Victorville that need to hear the gospel, God. So I pray that you would just expedite father god and what the enemy intended for evil that you would turn around for good father god we love you and it is in your name that we pray and all of us say amen church god bless you as you give this morning 
Today we are celebrating Mission M&M 3.0. Come on, Woo! give it up, everyone. In fact, for the last nine weeks, we have meditated and memorized the Word of God. It has been a commitment that we have set as a church family. And whether you've memorized one Bible verse or all 25, we want to celebrate with you. In fact, today we have an amazing Eminem crew bringing out four amazing people from our church. Would you give it up for them right now? Woo! Today we have Davey, and he is one of our youngest one who has taken the Mission m M&M Challenge. Davey, can you share how old you are? Seven. Seven years old, wow. And Davey, what was your favorite verse of Mission m M&M? Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Wow, way to go, Davey. Davey, why did you love that verse so much? Because if like you want something, you can't be anxious for it. And plus, Thanksgiving. I love pumpkin pie. <laughs> Come on, dude. We all love pumpkin pie. <laughs> and we also got Esteban here. Esteban, how old are you? 15 and a half. Awesome. Esteban, what's your favorite Bible verse and why did you participate in Mission m M&M? Uh, John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Um, I participated in Mission m M&M because it's always a blessing to learn scripture. Like, you can memorize something today, but in five years that's still going to apply to your life. And God's always never ending, and so it's, you can always memorize his verses. That is awesome. Give so it up for good. a step on that. So good word, man. We have Josiah with us as well. Josiah, can you share with us what your favorite verse is and why you love taking the Mission m M&M Challenge? My favorite verse is Psalm 42, 1. As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. And the reason I love Mission m M&M m is because God has given me so many different gifts, and one of the gifts is to memorize. So why not use it to memorize his word? Come on, Josiah. Yeah. We're so proud of you. So proud of you, Josiah. And lastly, we have Lana here with us. Lana, what has been your favorite um, Bible verse in Mission m M&M? That's what uh, Isaiah 41 verses 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and uphold you with my righteous right hand. The reason why I love memorizing m M&M m because I feel like the presence of God in my heart. And God blessed me to use that to bless others is either to give them courage or to give them hope. I love Amen. that, Lana. Would you Amen. celebrate with us right now one more time for these amazing people? In fact, church family, don't forget that just because Mission m M&M m is ending today doesn't mean that you can't continue to memorize and meditate the Word of God. Today, we start part three of our Navigate series. Let's prepare our hearts as we receive the Word of God. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to part three of our Navigate series. We are looking at the concept of what Jesus has done as he navigated interesting, troublesome, conflicting times in his own life. As he was presented with certain things that came his way, there's certain things that he had to deal with. And for us to look at how he dealt with it is a really good thing for us to examine. That's what our sermon series is about over these seven weeks, and today is part three of that. Part one, we looked at prayer and fasting, where Jesus got away for 40 days to fast and to pray so that he would be ready spiritually to handle what was going to come his way, prayer and fasting. Last week, we took time and we focused upon how God wants to speak life into our lives and bring us peace bringing us peace. Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, he represents peace, 
that he is the one who leaves us in a peaceful situation. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, that the Lord wants to give us peace. Today, I want to examine God's word. Talk about the word of God. Talk about the importance of the word of God. And on this Mission m M&M and Sunday, as we've been celebrating it, memorizing and meditating upon the word of God, we've been doing it over the last nine weeks, that I, we've been sharing different verses. One of my favorite verses out of this uh, Mission m M&M and season has been Jeremiah 29, 11. It says very simply, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future that the Lord has something in store for us and he wants to help us along life's journey, that he has come to give us life and give it to us more abundantly and we need to receive that abundant living from him. He's got great plans for us. Today as we look at the word of God, I want to take us to Matthew's gospel, chapter four, starting in verse number one through verse 11. Follow along with me as I read it for us today. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city And had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. And they will lift you up in their hands. So that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him. It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. I read this passage of scripture for us today because there's probably no other place more poignant in my mind of Jesus looking at the word of God and utilizing the word of God as a double-edged sword, that the word of God truly is the sword of the spirit. That's what the Bible says, that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And when we take a sword out, a sword can be an offensive weapon, but it can also be a defensive weapon. It can help put us on the offensive. It also can help ward off and, and, and help us to be more on a defensive posture. So whatever the case is, we can use the word of God in prayer. We can use the word of God in speaking life. We can use the word of God to help us not to succumb to temptation. In each of these circumstances, as Jesus is being tempted by the devil. And let me remind you, this comes right off of the 40 days of prayer and fasting. He was ready. He was spiritually attuned. He was ready for what was coming his way. And even though he was hungry, he combated the temptation of what the enemy gave him by quoting scripture. That's why we go through Mission m M&M. That's why we take time each summer to, to make sure that we're meditating and, and memorizing the word of God. And obviously, it's not just a summer thing. It's something that we need to do every single day of our lives, that we get into the word of God. The more into the word of God you will be, the better off you will be. And so Jesus said, it is written. It is written. It is written. On three occasions, on all three temptations, he quoted scripture. Not a bad thing for us to do. One, we want to stand firm in our faith. With that, I also want to remind you that the enemy also quoted scripture. On the second temptation, after Jesus quoted scripture, the enemy comes back, Satan comes back, he quotes scripture about what, what he's, you know, what, what the Bible says. It's not a misquote, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's perfectly accurate, but what is really important is that there are moments where that even the enemy can Quote the Bible because the enemy, one, knows God's word, but also with it, the enemy can lead you astray if you don't stay balanced. 
So that's why it's really important that we know the fullness of what God's word say, says to us because Jesus came back and then corrected him. The enemy will twist it to help his cause. And it's important that we don't twist it at all, but we handle God's word correctly. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 says to us, For we do not have a high priest, referencing Jesus, who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. I'm so thankful that Jesus understands what it's like to be tempted, yet he did not sin. He did not succumb to the temptation. He did not yield to it. And it's important for us to realize that we don't have to yield to it either, that he is our great role model, that Jesus is the one that points the way for us and that we need to not yield to or succumb to temptation, that it would become sin within our lives. Words are powerful. With the words that we choose, we can either criticize someone, we can bring destruction into their lives by saying some really derogatory things, or ultimately we can really, in a sense, kill them with, kill their heart, kill their spirit by what we say. Or we could go the other direction with it, and instead of bringing destruction and criticism, we can bring creativity. I, I want to remind you today that God spoke the world into existence, that out of nothing, at in, in, in the wonderful phrase is ex nihilo, that, that out of nothing God created the heavens and the earth. That he has this amazing creativity by speaking it into life. That we can choose to not only create, we, we can choose to bless. We can bless people. We can choose words that encourage them, that, that lift them up, that help them, that they speak life into their lives rather than destruction. So today... As we talk about God's word, God's word, which is incredibly powerful and wonderful, the four things that just are upon my heart that I would like to leave with you regarding the word of God and regarding the words of God's word. Number one is I want to challenge you to know the word. Know the word. Know the word. The more that we know the word, the better off we will be. That one, God's word is true. His word is true. In John 1, 14, it says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Jesus, who is the incarnate word, we go back to John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So Jesus who comes from the Father full of grace and truth. Jesus is the embodiment of that word. He is the incarnate word of God. He embodies truth, and God's word is true. John 17, 17 says, as a part of Jesus' prayer, this high priestly prayer of Jesus in John 17, he says, sanctify them by the truth, your word is truth. So we have God's word to us today, and, and as you may have a Bible in your hand, I've got one here on the pulpit, and, and as I have it here in front of me, God's word is true. It's important that we realize that there's all sorts of things going on in this world that, that pull us away from truth, but God's word remains true. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved a worker who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth, referencing the Bible, referencing the scriptures, that, that we correctly handle that. So you and I, as we've been given a Bible, and I hope that every one of us has a Bible in our hands, you've got a Bible in your possession. If you don't, call the church office. We will get a Bible to you. We love handed Bibles out. We want the word of God in your hands. And as you have it, then we now have the responsibility of handling it well, not, not just where we place it, but handling it in terms of how we read it, how we understand it, how we digest it, how it becomes a part of our lives, that we correctly handle the word of truth. 
I, I think of a very poignant moment in Jesus' life as Jesus is on trial in front of Pontius Pilate. And there's a, a dialogue that takes place between the true, two of them where Pilate asks the three-word question as simple as it could be, yet so profound. Pilate says, what is truth? And that really sums up exactly where we are in our culture today. What is truth? I take us to John 18, verses 37 and 38. And it says, as Pilate and Jesus are talking back and forth, and Jesus is literally in front of Pilate, Pilate is questioning him. And so Pilate says, you are a king then, said Pilate. And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Pilate retorts back, what is truth? With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I know, find no basis for a charge against him. He, he's trying to find out exactly what's going on and, and he's identifying that, that Jesus is a king. So you are a king then and, and, and Jesus talks about the truth because he came from the Father full of grace and truth. Jesus wants to bring that which is true into our lives. Billy Graham once made a very powerful statement where he said, truth is timeless. Truth does not change from one age to another, from one people to another, from one geographical location to another. Man's ideas may differ, man's customs may change, the moral codes may vary, but the great and all prevailing truth stands for all time and eternity. The truth of the word of God is there forever. God's word is true. You could take that to the bank, and the more that you know that, the more that you know truth. And we also know that God's word says to us that as we know the truth, the truth will set us free. There's something freeing about knowing God's truth for our lives. A second thing about knowing the word of God is that God's word's alive. See, friends, there's no other book on the same par as the Bible. Yes, it was written by 40 different human authors over about a 1,600-year period of time, inspired by the Holy Spirit himself. But because it was inspired, because God was involved in this process of this amazing book of an Old Testament and New Testament, 66 books that we have as a part of the canon of Scripture, we have that in front of us. We have that at our fingertips. we got to realize that God's Word is alive. It is amazing. It is a living book. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the divining of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That's exactly what the word of God does. See, God's word will remain constant because it is alive. Things will rise and fall. Kingdoms rise and fall. Governments rise and fall. Countries rise and fall. All sorts of things come and go. But God's word will remain. How do I know that? Because even the word of God says, Jesus said in the New Testament, heaven and earth will pass away. Think about that. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. The word of God, the words of our Lord will remain constant. They will remain true because they are alive and they're active. A third thing that we've got to know today is that God's word is powerful. God's word is powerful. What Jesus says, what, what, what the Holy Spirit inspired the writers to write, what God has said through his word to us, you can absolutely stand upon it. You can absolutely know that the power of the word of God that was as powerful 2,000 years ago is as powerful today as it ever has been. James chapter 1 verse 21 says, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives 
and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. For it has the power to save your soul. It has the power to save your soul, the power that is in us, the power that is available to us because God's word is alive, it is powerful. It's not just something you put on a shelf. It's not something that you just allow dust to collect. Nothing else is on the same par as the word of God. We've got to understand that God's word changes us as we dive into it. Powerful. The second thing that I want to challenge you to do regarding the word of God is that you would not only know it, so pick it up, read it, study it, memorize it, meditate upon it, all of those things. But also there's, there's another step that needs to happen. The step is to receive it, to receive it. Now, you may say, well, well, pastor, you know, what, what do you really mean by receiving it? L let me just say it this way, that the enemy, as we've already established, knows the word of God but he's not received it into his life in terms of he's going to live by it. So, so there's another portion to this. There's a lot of people who know Bible verses, yet they've not received those Bible verses. There, there's a lot of people who know Bible stories, but, but they really not receive the principles found in those stories. There's people who, who can quote different aspects of the 66 books of the Bible, but, but it doesn't mean that it's changed them. To receive it says that, that I'm, I'm going to make sure I walk down a road of, of really pulling it into my life. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, and we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. So, so what Paul is saying to the Thessalonican church there is that as they went on this missionary journey, as they established the church, as the church is now growing, that, that he's commending them for receiving the word of God. It is important for us each and every time that we open up the word of God to receive it. Say, Lord, teach me something about your word today. May I receive it into my life. Each time that, that someone is presenting, maybe there's a teacher presenting something on the word of God or, or right now in the middle of this message as I'm preaching to you and we, we're seeing all sorts of scripture as a part of this message that we receive what the Holy Spirit is saying through his word into our lives. We're receiving that. We're accepting it. We're, we're digesting it. We're pulling it in. It's a choice we need to make because if we don't walk down that road, we become knowledgeable, but it doesn't change a thing. God is wanting us to be transformed, not just knowledgeable. I think of what it says in Matthew's gospel, chapter 13, verse 20. This is the parable of the, the sower. And, and if you've ever read this parable, it's a, it's a wonderful power parable because Jesus even goes on then to explain the parable. And he talks about sowing the seed on, on four different types of ground. The, the first type of ground is, is that which is, is hard pan, it's a path. And, and unfortunately, as that seed falls along the path, and, and I think about how, you know, if we, we put seed on, on cement, it's, it's not going to germinate. There's, there's nothing, it's not going to penetrate the cement. It's going to stay on top. And at some point in time, if you live in the high desert, it's either going to blow away or some bird is going to come down and, and eat that seed. Something's going to happen to it. It's not going to produce what it needs to produce. So the path, not a good place. He goes on to say then there's a second kind of place where that soil is there and, and, and it's beyond what the path is. But, but as he says in, in verse 20, the seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. So again, say the word receive. Just say it out loud in your home, wherever you are today. Just say it, receive. I, I need to receive the word of God. It's like that, that seed that is planted in rocky soil and the soil receives it. But here's the problem is that the rocks choke out the root system so the plant can't grow. 
Well, before we get into the rocky part of this, let me just say the receiving part is what needs to happen. That we need to have hearts that are not hard panned, but hearts that are pliable, hearts that are open, hearts that are receptive, so that when the message comes forward, we can receive that message. Receiving the word of God is a choice. It's a choice for each and every one of us today, no matter where you are, no matter what your circumstance may be, it's a choice. And here's the thing. If we are not careful, we can be distracted and we need to remove the distractions in our lives. Let me just be be super frank with you that, that some of you even today as you're watching online, if you're not already on your phone and you're watching on a, on a television or, or a larger screen, maybe you're on your computer, it is easy to multitask, isn't it? And if we're not careful, we, we allow some other distractions. And don't get me wrong, I text people all the time, but there are moments where the Holy Spirit wants to do something in your life and the distraction causes you to miss the moment. And so I do challenge us in the midst of receiving the word of God to make sure that we remove the distractions. Take your phone, if you're not watching it on your phone, take your phone and put it aside. Take some of the other things that are going on because you may be right now even trying to multitask what you're doing and you're missing. We can miss out on receiving everything that God wants to give us because we're trying to do too many things at one time. Receiving the word is a choice, but also becomes an intentional focus. That, and when I say focus, I, I, I think of focus in leaning in. That, that we would lean into a situation that, that we'd want to hear more. That, that we want to receive more, that we want to make a conscious effort to, to pull it in. So that, that's why, just, and, and I'll, I'll love the day when we can all come back in again into this sanctuary that I'm preaching in right now that I'd love to have full of you, full of people. Um, and someday that's going to happen. But I also know that in the midst of pulling everybody back in, we can be distracted. I, I, I've seen it times where, where a, a child is, is in the service and, 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 and may be crying at that moment, and, and especially if it starts to get loud, it, it becomes a distraction to the people around them, and, and we, miss, we miss out. And it's amazing how it's amazing how the enemy allows distractions to take place in our lives in ways that we would not even think of it that way, but we miss out on the opportunity to really receive what God has. So as we look at the word of God, I I want you to know it, number one, but two, receive it. And by receiving it, take the distractions and push them aside. A third thing that I want to challenge us to do is that we need to stand upon the word. Stand upon the word. Now, this is where it gets a, maybe a little bit tougher. Maybe, maybe it's a, one of these moments where we, we have to work at it a little bit more to stand upon the word. In, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15, it says, So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. So we stand firm upon those teachings. We stand firm upon what the teaching of the word of God says in our lives because when we stand firm upon it, we will do well. I think about how we need to keep our feet planted not in the soil that is sandy and changes and shifts, but rather keep our feet planted upon the rock of Jesus Christ because then we will have a sure foundation. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. In other words, God's promises are yes and amen. They are true, and we can say amen to the promises of God because we know those promises will come true within our lives, that we can stand firm upon what God's word says. There were two Germans who wanted to climb the Matterhorn. They hired three guides, and they began their ascent to the steepest and most slippery part of their journey. The men roped themselves together in this order, guide, traveler, guide, traveler, guide. They had only gone a little way up the side of the mountain when the last man lost his footing 
he was held up temporarily by the other four because each one had put a toehold in the niches that had been cut into the ice. But then the next man slipped and the next man slipped. And before you knew it, the only one standing firm was the first guide who had driven a spike deep into the ice above him. Because he held his ground, all of the other men on the team beneath him regained their footing. It is easy for us to understand a metaphor like that as it relates to the slipping that taken place within our lives. That we can thank God because he is the one who drives that spike deep into the ground. That Jesus is the one who is our anchor. And it's God's word that leads us in understanding how he anchors himself and that he will get us through whatever it is that we face. Christ stands strong. The word of God stands strong in the midst of a culture that may be changing constantly, in the midst of an environment where the winds and all sorts of weather may hit us and beat against us. The fact is that Jesus remains strong. And that's why we can stand firm upon the word of God. So our challenge then is to keep your eyes fixed upon the Lord. In Psalm 16, verse 8, it says, I keep my eyes always, everybody say always, always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. That's one of our verses of our mission m M&M. One of the 25, I will not be shaken because the Lord is at my right hand. I will always keep my eyes on him. And when we do so, he helps us. He helps us to persevere. And right now, some of you may be feeling that way. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this stuff, you may be saying, man, I am just so over this. I'm so fed up with this. I'm ready for this to be over. I just want to get beyond this. And, and I would challenge you to continue to pray for that to pray for that to come to an end, that God would bring healing into our nation, that he would bring an end to this pandemic. But in the midst of that, we need to persevere. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't back away. God's word provides an ability for us to persevere, but it also provides a way for us to have a purpose-filled life. How many of you in the midst of this pandemic have said to yourself, what day of the week is it anyway? Is it Wednesday? Is it Thursday? Is it Monday? What day of the week is it? And we lose track of time because we've kind of lost our purpose. And God's word brings purpose back into our lives. As a part of this mission m and we bring to you today a missions opportunity. I'd like to show a video to you of amazing thing that takes place as we've been supporting Fire Bibles over the last several years as a part of our church. You've been giving towards Fire Bibles, a Pentecostal study Bible placed in a pastor's, a church leader's hand, a, a lay person's hand in a church where, where they have no access to this and Bibles are being shipped in and they're being translated into their own native tongue. It's an amazing thing. Last year in 2019, five particular fire Bibles were presented in brand new languages amongst all of the others that continue to be distributed amongst the 50 plus languages that are translated through this fire Bible amazing process. I'd like to show you this video for you to receive the joy of what's going on with fire Bible. Take a look at this. Twenty nineteen was another tremendous year for the Fire Bible. Together we launched the Fire Bible in five new languages, three of them being in India, the Punjabi, the Marathi, and the Oriya. Their resources are very limited. So a study Bible in Odia language will definitely help them to prepare their sermon in more uh, efficient way so that they can be a greater blessing to the congregation. The Albanian people now also have the power of the Fire Bible available to them in their heart language. We're losing the youth of Albania because they have no hope and no future here. That's what 
I love about the, this Bible is that they will have the possibility to know God. After many years of prayer, it comes as a miracle. And finally, the Vietnamese Fire Bible was launched. It only took us 21 years and three months to finish this book, but it's finished at last. This particular fire Bible is desperately needed in Vietnam because there's not a ton of resources in their dialect for them to study from. The Fire Bible year of 2019 would not have happened without you. There are more nations, tribes, peoples, and languages waiting to receive their Fire Bible in the year 2020. Let us bring the Fire Bible to them together. The Word of God is the best miracle that we have. The Fire Bible, bringing the fire of God's Word to the human heart. Thank you so much for being a part of an amazing opportunity this last year with providing fire Bibles, providing Bibles and placing them in the hands of people who desperately need them. So I think about what is taking place with those five languages. And as we move into this year, there will be additional languages, the Sinhala language, and, and, and just an amazing opportunity to put the Bible into the hands of someone who has never had that before in their own native tongue. Today, I want to challenge us to do something very powerful, very spiritual, and, and, and an opportunity to be purposeful about these Bibles. I want to receive an offering today. And normally we would do this, if you've been a part of our church, we would actually have a treasure chest in the front and you would come from all over the, the sanctuary, wherever you are, and, and place that one-time gift, one-time gift in that chest. We would report to you how much has come in and we would celebrate how those will turn into Bibles. The cost is $10 a Bible, $10 a Bible. Here's my challenge to you today. Think about how many people you have in your family. I've got five in my family. And for us to give a one-time gift of whatever the number of your family members would be times 10. In my case, the five times 10 is 50. And for you to either get your phone out right now and go to push pay and go to that account and give under Victorville Other Type in Fire Bible, let it be a part of your gift today, or you could send your gift to the church. You could give online as a part of our website. You've seen different ways in which we give. We'll receive that. Just put Fire Bible on it. It'll go to the right location, and I will guarantee you that every penny that comes in for Fire Bibles will go back out to put Bibles in the hands of people. That's putting some purpose in front of us today, and God wants to use us as his hand extended to bring purpose and life into someone else's life. So I think of this message today, that God wants us to know the word. He wants us to receive the word. He wants us to stand upon the word. But also fourth and final, he wants us to speak the word. To speak the word. That the more that we know God's word, the more we can speak life in other people's lives. Now, here's the, here's the interesting thing. As we talked about it last week, how, how, how Jesus wants to, us to be peacemakers, there are moments that we can bring peace, we can speak peace into a situation based upon what God's word says. We can speak life into someone else's life. Boy, there's a lot of people out there right now that are struggling. Amidst this COVID-19, they're struggling. They're struggling with their job situation. They're struggling with, with health. They're, they're struggling with just what in the world is going on in our country right now and across the world. People are, are polarized on positions, and everybody wants to make their point known. What would happen if we spoke life and blessing and encouragement and strength and we coupled that with our 40 days of prayer that we started praying prayers of blessing and life and encouragement and strength in other people's lives. What would happen if we started to do that? 
Jesus, as we go back to our storyline out of Matthew chapter 4, he quoted scripture. He stood upon the word of God on three different times when he was tempted. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. He spoke the word of God. The enemy, he twisted scripture. Jesus corrected him by saying, it is also written. In other words, this is how we should go. John 6. 63 says to us very simply, it is the Spirit, capital S, as in the Holy Spirit, who gives life. The flesh profits for nothing. The words that I speak to you, Jesus' words, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Jesus has come to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. The more that we receive from God what he wants to give us, the more that we know the word of God, the more we stand upon the word of God, the more that we can speak life into someone else's life. That's our challenge. You know, it's interesting because I go back to the Old Testament and I think about so many different wonderful storylines. And I think about Joshua, of all people. Towards the end of that wonderful book in the Old Testament, Joshua made a positive proclamation over his house over his family. And he said very simply, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. For us to make a positive proclamation, speaking life over your marriage, speaking life over your children. If you're old enough, speaking life over your grandchildren to the generations, speaking life over your friends, speaking life over your extended family, speaking life over our church, it is so important that we speak life. So our conclusion today, very simply, is build your life on the word of God and speak life over your family, over our church, over our community, over our country, over our world. Speak life, bring life because there's something attractive of what Jesus always does when he brings life into a situation. Let's pray. Lord, today, we thank you for the life that you give us through Jesus Christ. That your word is powerful, powerful to save us. Lord, thank you that you've come not to steal and kill and destroy like the enemy has come, but you have come to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. I pray, Lord, today that anyone here listening to this wonderful message, this great service, Lord, that their life would be changed, their life would be different, transformed, because, Lord, we would receive from you what you are speaking into our lives. Thank you, Lord, for changing us one person at a time. And I pray, Lord, today, that if there be anyone who is struggling, taking time, getting into the word, Lord, I pray today that they would make that commitment right now. Friends, just make the commitment in your heart that I'm going to get into God's word because God's word is going to continue to speak life into my life. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing, for you're truly awesome. I ask, Lord, that you would just change each heart. And if there be anyone today that doesn't know you personally, that you would knock on the door of their heart as you say in the, in the book of Revelation, chapter 3. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And I pray, Lord, that you would draw us into that relationship with yourself. Friends, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, today can be your day. Now can be your time. I'm going to pray Lead us in this prayer of dedication. We do it every week. But today can be your day. Today can be your day. Now can be your time to open up your heart to the Lord. Join me in praying this prayer. Let's all do it together, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus into this world to die upon a cross to forgive us of our sins. Today, Lord Jesus, I put my hope and I put my trust in you. Please forgive me of my sins and give me eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time or maybe you prayed it and rededicated your life to the Lord, just let us know that. In, in the chat, just say, I did it, exclamation point. Just simply, I did it. 
I did it. I made that decision. I prayed that prayer. I received Christ into my life. We just want to celebrate with you. If the house was full today, we would be clapping on your behalf. The Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice. So do we. Because you've come to know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. We'd love to walk with you. We'd love to help you in any way we possibly can. Yes, there's a water baptism service that will be held in our parking lot a couple of weeks from now. You can be a part of that. We'd love to dunk you in some water, baptize you as you now have a newfound relationship with Jesus Christ. Just let us know in the church office that you want to be baptized, and we would love to stand with you that way. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our service today. May we receive God's word. May we know it. May we stand upon it. And may we speak it each and every day of our lives. God bless you. That was an amazing message by our pastor, always reminding us to keep the word of God tucked deep inside of our heart. I love the fact that we can celebrate that. Yes, such a great message from Pastor. We want to remind you that next week is kickoff Sunday. Woo-hoo! I can't wait. So next week, wear your favorite jersey, whether it's baseball, basketball, football, any sport. Take a photo and tag us on VF Assembly. And for those of you joining us in our drive-in service, decorate your car. Wear your favorite jersey. Prizes are available to the best decorated vehicle. Yes, so we want to see your faces painted. Bring your pom-poms because we want you to root your favorite team on. Also, next week is Communion Sunday. For those of you online, join us and bring your communion elements with you as we partake in communion together. Well, Pastor Ryan, should we share the exciting news that we have going on? I think we should. I think so too. September 27th, Journey Kids Outdoors is launching. We want you to bring your kids to our drive-in service as it will happen simultaneously. We'll have kids with us in the courtyard at 9 a.m. So excited, but Pastor Lillian, Journey Kids Online is in 20 minutes. We better hurry up. Parents, grab your children and head over to Journey Kids as we will feed your children the Word of God. We love you so much. Thanks for joining us today. We will see you next week.